Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Olaf, we're from Aranth. And you're listening and watching Linear Rock. Brilliant, okay. So welcome Jake and welcome all of, of Amaranth to Linear Rock, Thank Italy. You. Pleasure to have you here. You're in Milan because you're about to play uh, a gig uh, with Stratovarius. So let's start with the tour first. Um, how long has this tour been going? And um, Stratovarius is such a big name in you know power metal music. How do you feel to share the stage with them? And do you have any uh, on the road story that this tour that you want to share with us? Mm, okay, I can, I can start. It was a very long question. <laughs> um, the tour has been going on for, I think, two and a half weeks now. Yeah, I think so. Or three weeks, more or less. We have, uh, I have, we have like nine more shows till we finish up in Stockholm. And we part ways with Stratovarius. Um, Stratovarius has always been uh, around us because like, we're a bit younger than these guys. So um, when we were 15, 16 years old, we bought their albums and, uh, you know, listening to them and uh, now we're on tour with them. And it's kind of cool because this is a co-headline. So uh, we're sharing everything 50-50 and uh, that, that means the stage time, the dressing rooms, the, the catering, everything. And, and it, that's kind of cool after they've been doing this for 15 20 years almost. Mm, 30 years actually, 1984, so it's 29 years. Yeah. And we've and been doing it for 2.9 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool, and uh, I don't know if Olaf has a story that happened on the tour yet, but. Um, I don't think, I mean. I Maybe think Jens, Jens um, story times. Yeah, exactly. I mean, instead of having stories that happen on the road, we have like almost every night we have a story time with Jens who wants some because obviously he was around in the 80s okay. touring with Ingrid Malmsteen and he did some crazy stuff with Stradivarius as well. So he sits up and he uh, tells about us, uh, tells these stories to us. Actually, this tour has been a very, very calm. You know, very kind of like a relaxed tour. Yeah, I almost yeah. remember yesterday. <laughs> 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 exactly. No, I mean, <coughs> usually there can be a little bit of drinking, a little bit of partying involved, but this tour has been quite, quite relaxed. So we don't have any, you know, big stories or anything like that so far. What but we have nine more shows to go. So yeah. Okay. We'll call you my, back. About yeah. That. <laughs> things made happen. And which is the last story that he shared actually with you? Uh, oh, like these are the, these are the badass stories that we can't share. I mean, okay. you would have to censor uh, every word on the All right, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, we see. Um, also, you're here to promote your new album, The Nexus, mm -hmm. uh, which has finally been released. Um, this record, compared to the previous one, sound-wise, um, seems, you know, that the heavy parts and the melodic parts are, in a sense, very distinct, distinctive, uh, like divided, and uh, not so melted, mixed together. Do you feel the same? And why? I mean, what happened during songwriting? Did you approach it in a different way? I think it's a perfect observation, actually, because the uh, initial ambition that we had was to make the contrast even more noticeable. <coughs> because uh, bands usually tend to head in a more streamlined direction, more you know, mainstream commercial kind of direction. And while we do have the uh, catchy parts that people could call commercial, we also wanted to make the heavy, heavier parts heavier and uh, just emphasize everything that was cool about the with the first record. <coughs> so I think that this album kind of signifies what we were trying to do with the first album, because it is kind of, you know, a lot of, you know, different combinations of styles and some really heavy parts here and some really melodic par parts here, but we just take that to 11 on this record and just okay. go all in with it yeah and uh, as you said like it sounds the same and and everything like that is like these songs are more streamlined in one way that they are that they sound like this that the poppy part are here the heavy parts are there but also the first album was written not for an album from the beginning it was just written for just for fun from the beginning so First we did one song, then it maybe took six months, then we wrote another song. Mm -hmm. And of course, these two songs didn't really fit together. This song, this album we wrote in maybe six, seven months, and uh, we had a clear idea what we wanted to do. So, um, <coughs> so it's, a, it's much more 
cohesive album. Kind of everything yeah. fits together perfectly in this one. So you are completely satisfied. Very Full much satisfied. Oh, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> and also this album, the Nexus, we recall the, the title, uh, is selling very well, like immediately. Mm -hmm. It went straight straight to the top ten in Sweden and Finland. Um, so with this great success, actually, did you expect it? And also, will you do a tour like on your own this time? Maybe because you know. Your yeah, we name will. is becoming, you know, bigger. <laughs> yeah, we will. We, we actually started this tour uh, with 10 shows in Finland for, uh, for two weeks before we entered this Stratovarius uh, run and it was sold out every day. Yeah, uh, the shows were kind of the same size as the ones yeah, that we were know, like this tour. We did 10 shows in Finland. Wow. And Finland is not the big country, yeah. but sold out shows for 10, 10 shows in Finland, that's kind of big. And uh, what was... W we anticipated that the album was going to be successful, of course, because that's always your feeling in your guts. But what was um, the coolest thing was the number one position on the iTunes charts in uh, the USA. Yeah. Uh, that was really that was a crazy thing when we got that information. Like, yeah, you, we you just popped the champagne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the <coughs> United States is a different, very difficult market. It's, it's a very different market, and we are obviously a very European band in, in the sound, and we're not been trying to adjust to any kind of you know American audience. So that was kind of kind of cool. But uh, to answer your question, yes, we are planning currently to do a headline tour. We don't have an, any details that are official yet. Yeah. But towards the end of the year, we will yeah. definitely do something on our own. <coughs> Since this is a co-headline tour, you can kind of very clearly see from, from city to city uh, how the audience differs. Because in some cities, you can see that, okay, there's a truckload of Amaranth fans here. So we're kind of discovering, yeah. you know, which places are good to play. And uh, when okay. we played in Strasbourg in France, it was, let's not play here, because this is obviously only Stratovarius <laughs> fans. <laughs> yeah, we had, so two shows. we had two shows on the, on the tour that... And th this back to the question before that uh, we share everything and we also share the fans. You can clearly see that half of the audience came there for us and half of the audience came there for Stratovarius. It is kind of equal. Uh, so, but we had two shows and it was like some, some part in South Germany and, s and in Strasbourg <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> where you could actually see that, okay, not that many came for us today. They, 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 these are Stratovarius <laughs> fans. But then you come to Milan. And uh, all the, the you know like the, there maybe was hundred people, uh, outside, like, yeah, yeah, outside already, yeah. and everyone wanted to take photos and uh, autographs and stuff like that. And then you clearly see that these guys are waiting in line for us as well. And that's that's and really that's cool. A good feeling. <coughs> of course, and then yeah. we know that we're gonna come back to Milan by ourselves as well. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I also got um, Amarone della Valpolicella from a, okay. a fan. So Great. thumbs up. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I got some homemade wine from a fan, that's also cool. <laughs> okay, so first single is the title track, The Nexus. Mm -hmm. uh, you also filmed a very cinematic video uh, for it, uh, again with Patrick Uleaus. Uleaus. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, where the idea comes from and uh, where did you film it? And will there be like a sequel maybe with the second single? Because, you know, it's very interesting. The video. Mm, yeah, there might be a sequel in the third <laughs> video, oh, okay. but not in, the, not in the second one. The second video is, a, is another kind of song. Right. Uh, but um, the, the, I idea, the yeah. idea has been a brainchild of me and Olaf from the beginning when we sat down and wrote the lyrics for this album. The lyrics is uh, a natural progression from the first album. And um, uh, it's a bit more futuristic. And then uh, me and Patrick sat down and tried to figure out like where we should record it, and you know, try to find some good locations and good actors and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And the the actual location is secret. It's like some old military base in okay. Sweden uh, that we were not supposed to be in, but we got the connection, so we were allowed to be there. But and well, actually, now everybody knows you've been there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we don't know. We, we don't know where it is. No, no, exactly. exactly. You don't it's know. Somewhere in Sweden. It. In somewhere yeah. Sweden, like an old nuclear site or something like yeah. that. But we have uh, filmed a second video quite recently before we w went on this tour, um, and it's. Um, I think we can reveal which is going to be the next single because it's already out everywhere. Yeah, do we it's with Burn it? with Me. Okay. Yeah. Burn with Me. It's the, the kind of the ballad, the sixth song on the album. And uh, on this video, I think that Patrick wanted to have a little bit more creative uh, freedom from, yeah. from his part because 
uh, me and Jake, uh, and especially Jake, have been kind of controlling when it came to the whole video concept that it was supposed to be within these specific boundaries. And now he had this idea, this vision that he realized himself. And uh, we just saw it ourselves uh, for the first time yesterday, yeah. and it's absolutely brilliant. And it's, uh, it's in a very different context, but it's at the same time it's very cinematic. So it should appeal to people who like the first video as well. Yeah, we, re we really want to do videos where we're not just standing there uh, playing we also want to act we, we, we want the you know like we want them to we want our videos to be more or less like th a three minute Hollywood movie okay uh, <laughs> and uh, you know you want to show another part of your uh, Arctic yeah. Arctic genre in yourself and you like yourself when you see the videos <laughs> then or yes, you know. no, no, no. <laughs> no 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 I, 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 I more or less use it f to get better. I think, okay. like when you do it once, and uh, did you know, like doing a music video is nothing. I've been like uh, doing really, really shitty, uh, you know, like acting things, like being an extra in 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 uh, TV series and stuff like that. And when they do something, they stand, they take a scene for one day, and they take it over and over again. Right. And someone says, like, think about this, uh, look at that direction. When we record our videos, you know, like we take two takes, and you know, like okay, that's good. So it's very, very, very dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Patrick makes sure uh, that he gets good camera angles every time, and also something you learned with every video that recorded that you always have to give something good yeah. to the director and to the producer, otherwise there's going to be shit coming yeah. out of the video at the end of the day. Jacob Bunsen <coughs> is on produ production once again. Um, he is a very famous producer in Denmark. He won a lot of awards and so on. So why him for you? And um, how did you met with him? And did he collaborate also on songwriting and arrangements during I mean, the recording process? Did he change anything? Or uh, you prefer to stri stand you know, strict to your um, inspiration? I can just answer the first thing, and then Olaf can take the rest of the story. Okay. Why we choose him again yeah. was because, like, we found our sound with him on the first album and uh, we were actually discussing you know like uh, shall we use someone else and you know like we, we th took these ideas and threw them away pretty fast because we realized that if we're gonna do this second album we want it to sound like the other one uh, like the first one but with the new songs yeah. so uh, that was the reason and he's a fucking genius when it comes to sound mm, absolutely and um, I think we discovered him through, I was uh, in another band called Night Rage until recently and they did their third album with uh, Jacob Hansen and I was just uh, there, I was not in the band at the time, just helping them out with production. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that this guy had a very, very good ear. And that's something that is very, very difficult. The most difficult and taxing part of recording an album is the vocal recording because that needs to come out absolutely perfect otherwise the whole album is going to sound not so good yeah. and he has perfect ears okay. he's uh, when it comes to that he was one of one of the best in Europe for sure so <coughs> and also uh, he's Danish and Morten our drummer is Danish and he has recorded I think maybe 15 albums or something yeah, like that 15 or 20 session uh, drumming in the in that studio <coughs> so it was kind of a natural thing to do and also uh, on the last album it was we were working with him for 2 months so we got to know each other really really well so yeah, it was a very natural choice for us, even if we had a few other ideas. Yeah. And we'll see what happens with the third album. You have a woman singer in the band, Lise, and um, we all know that you know metal world is like a male universe. Has always been like that. Also now, in the modern days, it's still the same, pretty much. How does it feel for you to have a woman in the band? The do the dynamics changes and do you cuddle her? She's like a queen or no. she's treated, you know, just just like everybody else. I used to I used to say like this that we're six guys in the band okay. and she's one of them. Okay. And uh, that summons it all pretty good, I think. That's that's pretty much <laughs> it because I mean, we're not uh, any kind of traditional female fronted band either. Uh, we're not like Nightwish where you have five guys backing up this, you know, woman but uh, of course, uh, Elise is, uh, is different in the fact that she is a girl, but she is not necessarily... Of course, she has some very girly sides, like every girl, but <laughs> she also has some, you know, she can take the guy's humor to a pretty good extent. And uh, um, so I, I think it will work out quite <coughs> nice in that aspect. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
You've done two European tours, one with Ammerfall and one with Camelot, uh, two very different bands from, you know, compared to Amarant, um, in the attitude and in the sound. Which experience was the best for you? I think the Hammerfall tour because like we had much bigger audiences on that tour and I also think that their that the audience were more they were closer to our music than it was with, with Camelot in some way but but <coughs> Camelot also the Camelot's fans also attracts our music or yeah. what do you say about it? both was really good you know like it's hard to be in, we've always been in bands for 10 years but smaller bands and <clears throat> when you first get on your first real tour you learn a lot of stuff and we still learn a lot of stuff after 200 shows or whatever we've done yeah, yeah, with this exactly. band now so and I think the big difference was that when we did the Camelot tour we had just released our album the, like the month before I think yeah the month before we were touring in May and we released the first record in April of 2011 so people hadn't really you know acknowledged the band fully yet when we did uh, the tour with Hammerfall we had a re-release of the CD which was out in uh, Italy and in yeah. uh, Germany and a lot of places where the uh, first record wasn't available when we did the Camelot tour so I, I think that was a much bigger turnout with our fans actually and naturally we had a lot more live experience Today, when you're looking at YouTube clips from what we were doing back in the <coughs> you know, Camelot tour days, I think we were a much better live band at that point. So, for me, it's definitely, I think the Hammerfall tour was, was way better for me personally. Okay. A question for you, Olaf. Um, hmm? You are also the leader of Dragonland. Um, do you think that um, now that Amaranth is becoming bigger, bigger, and bigger, uh, you will give up with the other band or you, you will keep both projects? Um, you know, same level and same kind of importance. What will you do? I will probably still keep on doing the Dragonland stuff because it's a very different different style of music, obviously, from what we were doing with Amaranth. And there's a lot of classical arrangements and stuff that, that we don't do and we're never going to do with, yeah. with, with Amaranth, obviously. So it's good to have that kind of outlet. But something I'll probably not do is I will probably not tour with Dragonland. Because we've never been a touring band. I think we've done like 30 shows in 10 years or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've done more shows the last month than we have done <laughs> in our entire yeah. career. So, yeah, maybe. I will never say never. Maybe we will play a one-off show here and there just for fun. But Amaranth is by far the main focus. Okay. Elise is considered one of the best singers in metal around the world. What if somebody, you know, will steal her to Amaranth? What will happen? And actually, is that correct that Nightwish tried actually to, you know, no, have no. her in the band? <laughs> what happened? No, the, the, thing, was the thing was that um, Annette got sick there in, in the United States and they asked yes. her and also the other girl, well, two girls, like yes. to, if they could step in for her. It was last September, right? Exactly. Yeah. And they didn't want to cancel the show. And we did actually the <coughs> same thing the other day because Elise was sick. So we brought the, the girl in the uh, opening band. Seven uh, Kingdoms, from yeah. Seven Kingdoms, and uh, so she joined us for a couple of songs. It's easier for us because we're already th two more singers. Yeah. So, so you <laughs> I sang all the songs, and then we also Elise parts. Yeah. But um, Elise did though send an when they choose Annette, and we didn't have um, Amar uh, Amaranth at all. We helped her and uh, to uh, you know apply for the band back yeah. then. But mm. the, that's the only thing. So but they I, I didn't try to steal her. No. <laughs> and and if someone would steal her, um, that would be her mistake then, because like it's her band okay. and uh, uh, we're g getting bigger. So, uh, so. I mean, uh, that's exactly the point. Elise is one of the earliest members of this band, probably the earliest besides me and Jake. And uh, <coughs> she's also an integral part of the songwriting team, and she's created. Uh, kind of a vital part of the of the whole band so it's not like she's the singer and we are paying her to stay in the band and somebody else comes and pays more and then she will go to that project it's not like that she um, she's here to stay for sure okay and how do you imagine yourself in 10 years by now mm -hmm. I big, uh, build a big <laughs> castle in the Piazza del Duomo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. No, it's, it's very hard to uh, project the future because uh, two years ago we couldn't have imagined that we'd be even sitting in this uh, Radio Lombardia uh, in, uh, <laughs> in Milano doing interviews with you guys. I mean, it's, it's a lot of new stuff happening all the time and uh, just the response that we had for the Nexus album has been way beyond our expectations with the number of YouTube plays and with the iTunes metal charts yeah. and the 
album charts in, in Finland and Sweden. So uh, no idea, no telling what's going to be in 10 years, but hopefully we'll still be doing this because this is what we love doing, basically. Yeah. And we hope so for you guys. Thank yeah. you so much for your time and Thank enjoy you. the show tonight. Enjoy Milan and hope to have you back to Linear Rock soon. Yeah. We will be back. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Grazie.